Hello Affinity Designers, welcome to episode 5 of our Comic Toolbox. Today we're looking at making brushes for hand lettering and we'll use these samples as our guide. If you've watched any of my other brush making videos, this is going to be pretty old hat to you. The basic idea for creating a hand lettering brush is to trace a straight letter, usually the downstroke of the letter I or maybe a T or an L, and um, just create a slight uh, irregularity somewhere at the ends. Uh, maybe one is slightly more tapered or one's more bulby or one's squared off. Uh, just, just an interesting shape that's fairly simple but has a little bit of a character on the two ends. The middle should have some area that's very similar in height because we're going to turn this into a repeating brush and we're going to bring in the tail and head offsets so that um, while we stretch out a line the interesting parts of the ends are um, stay in place but the center part will stretch or uh, repeat so um, it can span any length of line you wish. It's also really a good uh, inking tool if you want to create a slight irregularity to your line work for say uh, a um, ink style drawing. So I'm just creating a black background and drawing the white shapes on top because as you know it, when you're creating a uh, textured intensity brush in the uh, designer persona you have to have a white brush on a black background. It's got to be pure white on a pure black background um, otherwise you'll get some weird um, effects, you'll get some weird uh, opacity issues. What I'm doing here with my second brush is I'm going to try to match the overall size to the other brush so that there's consistency. When I import them I don't want to have a wide, a wild range of um, you know, size issues. So I'm going to try to make them as, as close to the same as I can and as close to flat as I can. I rounded off that corner but honestly you can leave those little um, corners if you like. The idea is just a simple shape with a little bit of character. In the export persona, draw your slices pretty close to the size of the object and then give it a meaningful name so that when you import them into the brush engine, the name will transfer in and you'll have a nice way of knowing which brush you're using. And we'll just create some new textured intensity brushes from those two uh, PNGs that we saved. You can delete those now because we're done with them. Do a little practice and then by double clicking bring up the uh, dialog box and we're going to switch from stretch to a repeat brush and then drag in the head and tail until the thumbnail shows us no jagged edges. We want a smooth connection between the two endpoints. That looks pretty good. And then you can do a little testing. I wanted to show you what happens if you try to letter without the stabilizer turned on. Um, in my case, it's my hands kind of shaky and my lettering's not so great. So by turning it on, not only do you smooth out your letter forms, but um, it really lets the, the character of your brush uh, come out, as you'll see when I turn on the stabilizer here. It's a big difference. Since this series is really about how to use Affinity Designer to speed up your comic making workflow, it's not really about the actual practice of lettering, but I'll include some links in the description to books and websites that might be some help if you want to improve your lettering ability. I'm going to go ahead and repeat what I did for the first brushes using Ben Oda's artwork, but um, this time I'm going to flip the brush and make a copy of it. It's amazing how just flipping a brush either vertically or horizontally can change the character of the uh, brush when you use it and also allows you to um, have some certain effects like a, a stroke can have a blob on the end instead of a straight end just by choosing a different brush for that particular stroke. Once I've got that locked in, I'll just do some samples here using that text as some practice. Pulled some guides down. A time-saving shortcut is to create an alphabet and save that as a asset. And then you can just drag that out and move the pieces around, make copies of them um, instead of hand drawing every single time. It gives you some consistency and it's not as hard as making a font. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Catch you next time.